am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, what it's going to be about today is about uh, the royal family and this feud uh, between the brothers, uh, William and Harry. But it goes back even further than that. So we're going to look at instances way back in the past, before the 1100s, uh, when uh, brothers, royal brothers, uh, feuded right up to current day. So we're just going to uh, list out what's going on, see what the cards think about how this applies to what's happening with the king and his brother Andrew, and also William and his brother Harry. So uh, that's what the video will be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about uh, what's happened with these uh, royal uh, brothers over history. And so I got some notes off of, um, uh, uh, not YouTube, but uh, probably uh, Google. Actually, I just Googled uh, royal brothers arguments and uh, this is what I came up with so this will be very quick and then we'll draw the cards and see how any of this applies to what's happening now with the current royal brothers feuds so uh, six times is what we have here going all the way back to the reign of Harold Godwinson so he was the last of the Anglo-Saxon uh, kings and uh, so he what happened with him is he defeated and killed his brother Tostig during Tostig's invasion with um, another Harold uh, so he killed his own brother over uh, English uh, sovereignty, I suppose. So that's, uh, and that led to the Battle of Hastings, of course, everyone knows of 1066. Then after that, <clears throat> we've got William II, who is also known as Rufus uh, for his red hair, and then Henry I. And now in 1100, uh, William II, um, uh, what did he do? So he, uh, it looks like he may have a planned the murder of his brother Henry, um, no, his his murder was planned by Henry. So William II, Rufus, was murdered by Henry I. Uh, and he became Henry I because Rufus Rupert was out of the way. Now, it's not sure if that's what happened. There could be something else that happened there, but that's kind of what it looks like. Then we've got Henry I and the Duke of Normandy. And what happened in that? That's in 1106. So Henry I now uh, defeated uh, his oldest brother, uh, Duke Robert of Normandy. And he put imprisoned him in Cardiff Castle where he was for, his, for the final 29, 29, 29 years of his life. Now you uh, English folks know all this stuff, but the rest of the world may not. Now then we have another instance of Richard the First and John. So what happened with those two? So Richard, um, Ah, oh, so Richard was in an Austrian jail, and then John, his younger brother, tried to uh, take Richard's place um, uh, because his brother wasn't there. But then, uh, you know, he forgave him. Richard forgave him, and um, so that was model behavior for royal brothers. So this is something that uh, we can go back to say, okay, was this a fix? But then the next thing that happens is in 1477 during the War of the Roses, Edward the Fourth imprisoned his brother uh, the Duke of Clarence in the tower where he died and they suspect he was probably murdered on Edward the fourth's instructions then of course more modern times we have Edward the uh, five six Edward the eighth five six seven eight Edward the eighth and George the sixth and we all know what happened here is that uh, Edward um, for his love of Wallace Simpson the American twice divorcee <clears throat> he loved her more than being king and uh, his younger brother, Prince Albert, later Prince George the Sixth, didn't want to be on the throne, but had to take the throne. And then he banished him. He never, was never allowed to come back into the kingdom ever again. Actually, Edward abdicated the throne, but uh, he wasn't allowed to come back into the uh, into the country again. I think maybe once, but that was the case. Um, so it's just a, a case of of brothers not getting along. And now we come right up to present time. We've got King Charles III and Prince Andrew. So, you know, Prince Andrew, sex scandal, all of his royal duties stripped away, uh, and there's this uh, tug of war regarding his uh, residence. Uh, so, you know, that's an ugly thing. And it looks like Charles is just not going to have any of it. And they write down to William and Harry, who, keeping with tradition, 
because Harry spewed the family secrets, um, some believe, um, William won't have anything to do with him. It looks like just in solidarity with his father to a large part. So that's, you know, is it some sort of a healing that has to take place in that royal line of secession and it's never going to end until it does. And so if that's the case, then the next royal brothers we have in line are uh, George and Louis coming up. So, or could it uh, be between George and um, his sister uh, because now she, if something were to happen to George, she would be the next one to ascend to the throne. So that's what we got. And uh, so we'll do it with this, these cool cards I've got called the uh, Mucha Tarot. And so these are um, very great cards. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'll tell you all about them. They've got a very interesting history. So what's going to go on? What's the deal with this royal brother uh, rivalry, this deadly uh, conflict that's happening in the royal family and it just seems to come down through the ages. Is it always greed? It always seems to be around the monarchy. Okay, it's not just I don't like you or you keep beating me at uh, uh, hockey or whatever it is. Polo. Uh, but there seems to be this ingrained royal problem. So let's see if this is something that's coming down through history, if it's going to get uh, resolved for jo uh, Prince Charles and his brother, and if it's going to be resolved for William and Harry. But before we do any of that, oh, these cards don't want to spread out. Let's take just a moment of meditation. Are they going to, is this actually, is what we're seeing today in these uh, royal brothers of being so uh, torn apart, is this just a continuation of some wound that needs to heal? I mean, and you even have, you think about it, now that I think about it, it was even with Elizabeth and her sister, uh, the first Elizabeth. So, three cards. Is this current royal problem between the brothers and I want to include both I got four cards and I want to include uh, both uh, King Charles and his brother Andrew and uh, Prince uh, William and his brother Harry so is this a uh, cosmic or a um, you know uh, a lifelong festering this is going to happen so here we have an abuse of power the five of swords swords of truth justice rules of law and so what all of these represent is an abuse of power. In one case where the true king was actually able to forgive his errant brother, but um, for the most part, it all involves an abuse of power. So I think we're on the right track. The next card up here, uh, okay, so it's about happy family, which is the 10 of cups, but it's not. Um, this is what it should be, but it tells us that we're still in a family mode. We're talking about abuse of power, royal power. We're talking about um, familial happiness so it seems like we're, we're on the right track and remember these first cards that i pull are always intended to get us into the psyche of the question kind of so and then here we have the queen of wands so actions plans forward movement queen of wands queen of wands in the third position regarding this question so it's not having quite the uh, authority of a king to get your plan across. So there's some uh, immaturity to the development of the plan. And then the final uh, outcome here is the uh, death card, is the, 10, the 13, 
which is a complete end of a cycle. And in fact, in many cases, it, it was death. So I think I've, I've got a clue about what this is starting to get us into the field of. And yes, it looks to me like this is a, um, a healing that has to take place. Uh, so abuse of power is what it's all about, is, is taming the royals. So that kind of makes me think maybe they do have some sort of um, divine authority. But uh, the, the problem that we're dealing with is happy family, of course. Um, getting that plan uh, up to the level of king never seems to be quite right. But look, we've, uh, we've progressed to the point now to where, you know, I mean, this could have been in the past a page. It could have been a non-royal card. But in this case, we've gotten the plan all the way up to the level of queen. And um, we are on the right track because this is the track to put that matter to bed forever, to, to the death of that issue. Okay, that's how I see this, these cards directing me. Okay, so that's interesting. So what about, let's start in on a full uh, Celtic cross, and I want this to cover both um, Prince Charles and, or sorry, King Charles and uh, Prince Andrew, and then the two princes, William and Harry, in this one uh, Celtic cross. So let's see what the cards can tell us about uh, healing for the king and his brother and the prince and his lesser prince brother. We're going to do six cards and then we'll do another four after that. To, then we'll finish up the dyadic cross. Okay. So this will be the first part and I expect to get into the feelings um, of, um, and not the personal feelings, but kind of the, the global feelings of, uh, or the universe uh, um, knowledge of what's going on with uh, King Charles and his brother Andrew and how it might uh, tie into this legacy. It's <laughs> the Two of Pentacles, which of course is try is weighing out the value. And of course, it's always about that, isn't it? It's about one wanting to be more valuable than the other. That's the signifier card of this draw. The challenge to that then is the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is always have emotionally having to leave something behind. Of course, that's what it's all about. Uh, Harry has had to leave behind his royal family. Um, uh, his brother William, um, I think is fine with that. In so many cases, it was always about one of the brothers being willing to leave something behind, and so many times they were willing to kill in order not to do that. The basis of this whole reading then is looking at things from another perspective. So that's interesting. So the hanged man and a major arcana card. So looking at something from another perspective having to do with this royal uh, legacy. So when you're looking at it, let's go all the way back to uh, ancient times. Uh, when those uh, brothers were fighting it out uh, to be king, I don't know that we're able to put ourselves into their mindset. But now uh, we're looking at uh, King Charles not willing to, be, I mean, how easy would it be for him just to make the rest of his brother's life Comfortable. It wouldn't be hard. But he's not going to do it. It's a matter of principle. Looking at things from another uh, angle. Prince William and Prince Harry. Neither one of them is willing to give an inch, it looks like. Look at things from different perspectives. In the past of this, though, uh, is all the issues. So the eight of, of wands, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And we can see that there's just been so many things that had happened. So even back to those ancient times, there is a history that went on with all those brothers throughout history that we aren't personally familiar with. Um, and those are the issues, but it's all in the past. It's, it's time to move on, but so many times history shows us that they can't. In the sky of this then is a look at this. So this is the queen of Pentacles. And the sky of this is the value of that monarchy. The queen of Pentacles to me represents the monarchy. And then the final outcome 
for this rivalry is this Knight of Wands is uh, the king wanting to say, I make the plans. I am the knight. So form, it's a matter of just ego. Uh, four more cards to finish this out with the king and, um, and Andrew and then also uh, William and Harry uh, about a resolution in this. So, so far what we have here are all the excuses for why this has happened. But uh, let's see if this reading, it looks like it might be leaned more towards Charles and, and Andrew. So what's the signifier card of this reading? It's having a big plan and saying, I am in charge. The um, environment that that's in is uh, wondering if I've done enough. Of course, the, the brother in charge has to be the one who's always wondering if they've done enough. Uh, and this is making that crop, carrying that value away. The hopes and the fears then is the Nine of Cups wanting to show your emotional um, wealth. And then the final card is this Ten of Wands, which is a heavy load with all these issues to bear. I don't see any resolution here. This is only for the King. And uh, the final card with this Seven of uh, Swords is uh, uh, Theft and Betrayal. That's how he feels. Period. With everybody. And Camilla has been the salve that has been his uh, only pleasure in uh, all of this, I think. Besides his, his uh, you know, how comfy his life is. So yeah, I think this is telling me that no, the king will never uh, forgive his brother. He made his bed and he should lie in it. I think that's how, literally, in Andrew's uh, Case. He made his uh, bed with these uh, women and Epstein, and uh, Charles is saying, no, he can just fester in it. And it's so funny when Charles, I mean, he wasn't jumping around with a ton of women or underage women, but he certainly did his share of not pleasant things to, um, to his wife. Him and his wife did that. So, yeah, King and, and Andrew, that's never going to resolve. It's only going to get uglier and more complicated. Um, so let's talk about William and Harry. Uh, same thing, full uh, Celtic cross. Interesting, I was just drawn to pull those cards two at a time. And we're talking about William and Harry, whom we consider much closer. Signified card of the womb and Harry issue. Again, is emotional displays. The challenge to that is um, the tower. The, 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 this is part of the problem with William and Harry. Uh, William, I think, is only looking at this from a, uh, a catastrophe uh, situation. His father, of course, had to become king out of the catastrophe of the grandmother dying, which is just how it works. William realizes that the catastrophe of him becoming king is going to happen very soon, and this whole thing with his brother is just another issue, which is another catastrophe. So yeah, he wants to show his emotional capacity, but it's just too much. And of course, now he's got Catherine on top of all of that. The basis of all of this is to come out as the victor, the Six of Wands. The basis of all of this is to be focused on being successful in this endeavor and not the endeavor of brotherhood sadly the endeavor of the monarchy the uh, past to this of course is that he has felt trapped and i think this is not only the past this is right up until now and he's going to feel this until maybe even after he might feel like this feeling of being trapped is going to pass when he becomes king not that he's looking forward to becoming king but that might be the thing that Makes and, and maybe not, but whatever it is, he feels trapped in it. And in the sky of this is the uh, another queen of cups. Okay, and this is, I feel like this is Catherine for some reason. But in the sky of this is the queen of cups. She is getting a lot of attention right now. The um, likely outcome for the first part of this for William and Harry is this a knight of, no, I'm sorry, this is a page is this page of pentacles. 
the likely outcome is very little value given to the likely outcome. Um, this question is just mired in illusion and delusion. For William and Harry specifically, I mean, we are familiar with the royal um, intrigue that's going on behind the scenes because we're living in this era, so we don't know all these personal, uh, how the royal family was manipulated in the past or what were the things that made those other brothers come to the decisions they did. But in this one, we know it's the illusion and delusion of trying to manage, I think, the press and the image of the monarch. Um, the, the environment that that's in is this six of pentacles, which is having to distribute that value, having to distribute that value and being the one who is in charge of that. Well, I think the idea of what's coming up and, and making this incredible decision among others is just weighing down on uh, William, and it may have caused him to be a little bit frozen in this in this instance. The hopes of the fears for this, ah, is that with the um, truth, justice, rules, and law, that's what swords represent, is knowing when to make a move and doing it so that you're not hurt and still protected. And the likely outcome with the William and Harry eventually is, um, oh gosh, is the uh, Empress. There is a divine pull here, and I wonder if this doesn't e eventually represent Diana stepping in at some point, but is it going to get resolved? I'm going to pull several cards until I'm satisfied with the answer. Queen of Wands. Is it going to be resolved? No, not quite resolved, because we've got a queen, not a king. Is it ever going to be resolved? Okay, so we do have Happy Family come up for that ever going to be resolved. And the Seven of Wands. I think it just always gets to a place that is livable, okay? That's acceptable um, and somehow quiet. That's what I think. So I think there's never a real uh, solution with William and Harry. And sadly, um, that's where it'll have to be left. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so these are good. These are the Tarot Mucha. This is another Los Scarabio. But they come in a cool case, which I love. And these cases are so useful when they stand up like this because you can take the little booklet out and you still have the cards kept nicely there. And these have an, a good booklet. I mean, it's, it's cool looking paper. Uh, it's got uh, interesting uh, suggestions for divination of the cards. And, uh, you know, it's, la it'll, it's lasty. So we have that. Now the cards... I'll show you before we get started. Are right, easy to use. They've got, they're beautiful on the back, and uh, they're really nice uh, on the front. And they're not too hard to interpret. I mean, they're typical uh, Rider weight uh, iconography, and uh, you can figure out what they mean without very much trouble at all. So, you know, if you don't get to look at a lot of cards, tune in to me, and there you're going to see some kind of cards because I'm getting them all the time. And um, at one point. We'll have to start to give some of these away because I've just got too many. But uh, not now because I love everything I've got. Very greedy. But uh, hopefully these cards will give us some good answers. And we'll get working on that. Tarot Mucha. Done in the uh, style of the artist uh, Alphonse Mucha. Google it.